Hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with author and artist Dan Santat. Dan, thank you for jumping in and taking some time to talk with me. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for saying yes. I usually start out with a question that's related to something about what comics allow you to do or what drew you in. So I'm curious about what initially drew you to comics. Um, you know, comics were the medium that got me into reading. I wasn't a big reader. Uh, I, I had a paper route that I inherited from a, a, a kid in the neighborhood. His name was Kyle Hopple. And while he was showing me the ropes about you know, delivering papers in the neighborhood. He also showed me this big wooden chest that he had of all his Marvel comics. And he would just tell me all the storylines and I immediately fell in love. It was like, it was like someone, you know, I, I, I had discovered the, the little boy soap opera that I always wanted. Uh -huh. And then once I inherited the, the paper route, I used all, I, you know, I used a good chunk of my money to buy comic books. And then I started getting into it. Um, and I love to draw, so I think it lent itself to that medium. And I hate to say this, but, you know, being an Asian American kid growing up in America, like I remember thinking, oh, it'd be awesome if I could be an actor or if I could be in movies. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the only the only uh, the only Asian people I saw in movies were either like getting beaten up, you know, by Steven Seagal or Van Damme or Jackie Chan. And I thought, well, I I, I guess there's really no venue for storytelling in, in that respect for me and then I thought animation and then I tried I tried animating and I really hated it because it was such an arduous process and you know the, the idea of getting to write and direct your own feature just seemed very slim to none and so I remember going to art school and then taking a children's book illustration course and falling in love with it and realizing that it was a medium that I that I really could find the possibility of actually having something that would end up on a shelf that people would consume. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't confident in my writing abilities at first, you know, starting with picture books thinking, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe fewer words and, and, and things like that and relying more on my illustrations. I could actually, um, you know, do more. Uh, and, and as time has gone on, I've, leaned more into the larger medium here, you know, with graphic novels, because I just felt like it was the next logical step, you know, leaning more into my illustrations. Um, but as the years have gone on, I've, I've grown more confident with my ability to tell stories. And now I'm at a point where, I mean, I, I hope, I hope people view me as, you know, uh, a writer who just happens to know how to draw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I had um, that moment when I was introducing you and I thought, well, Illustrator is part of that, but uh, mm -hmm. definitely author and uh, authoring through illustrations and right. authoring with illustrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so curious about what has inspired you to create stories, particularly for young people, although I'll also say anyone of, of virtually any age could enjoy your stories as well. Um, I think my strongest work comes from I, I need I need a muse of some sort. I think uh, so. If you were to take Beekle, you know, I, I I rely heavily on family for uh -huh. for that inspiration. So Beekle is a love letter. It's a it's a it's a metaphor about the day my son was born, my first son, and uh, you know, Beekle was actually his first word for bicycle. Uh -huh. And so you know that that whole story is about you know, the expectation of being a first time parent waiting to meet your child for the first time. Yeah. Um, you know, are we there yet? It's for my younger son who, you know, always wanted to hang out with his older brother, but, you know, was too little. And so he was always, always looking forward to, you know, growing up. And, and so I made a book, you know, dedicated to him about, you know, just enjoying being in the moment, enjoying being a kid. Um, mm -hmm. You know, after the fall is a love letter to my wife about her uh, her struggles with anxiety and depression. Um, the Aquanaut, um, you know, that's that's about the loss of a, a parent, a father. So that one's dedicated to my father. And then uh, first time for everything was directed towards myself and and like that thirteen year old kid that you know had a, had a rough time in in school back in the day. But you know, finding 
finding that period in your life where you felt like things were slowly turning around and that things were going to be okay. So I often find, yeah, I often find that I need a, I need a muse to bring out, to bring out my best work. So I always seem to rely on that. Yeah, I love the, the connection to family and parts of your story. And as you were going through titles there, I was just thinking about how different those titles are uh, just from Aquanaut to first time for everything. I mean, yeah, yeah. Really stunning. Yeah. I mean, I'm always trying to do new things. I don't like, I don't like doing the same thing twice. Yeah. Uh, there was an option years ago, of course, you know, the publisher, you know, asked me if I wanted to do a whole spinoff of, you know, Beagle books and which, you know, I'm sure probably could have done very well. Um, but there was a part of me that really just said, I don't want to be the Beagle guy. Yeah. You know? And I felt like I stuck that landing and I, I, I moved on. Not to say that I couldn't go back to it if I didn't want to. Right. But I, I, I like to venture off into other things. You've also become a, a master of the long form sort of visual and verbal storytelling graphic novels, which from what I've heard is no small feat. Uh, I think that's uh, one of the most time consuming kind of processes that I've heard about in publishing. It is time consuming. I think, I think my love for film and, you know, setting up a shot, um, just, oh, I just had a passion for film, right? Uh, pacing, um, you know, just studying the, studying the medium in general. I think it's just a huge valuable tool. Also, you know, when I was in art school, that was a lot of things because I thought I wanted to work in film. I thought I wanted to be a storyboard artist. So, you know, you study all those things. They make you study Hitchcock. They make you study, you know, Citizen Kane and movies like that, studying compositions. And so that was an education that um, eventually was very valuable to me in in a medium that really lends itself pretty well to those those disciplines you know yeah. Yeah. for me comics and film kind of live in a, a similar place in my mind i started getting into them at about the same time so i could tell right you. right right yeah i'm curious about as well but min lay is someone that i've talked with a couple of times for mm -hmm. this podcast and for other projects so curious about your collaborations with men and what that's been like um you know he, men's the perfect collaborator because he writes in a way where he understands when visuals will probably be more important than the text mm -hmm. and so he's very good at writing just enough text but leaving at a point where he knows where the illustrations will take over so for example you know, one author might say, oh, it's a shiny red apple, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. leave the description of the apple to me, you know, where men would write, oh, he was eating, he would, he, he'd go so far as saying like, oh, he was eating a piece of fruit. He would probably let me decide if it was an apple and what color it was, you know, um, but he will, he will, in many cases, he'll, he'll, he'll lend the story to going into a fantastic world. And then he completely leaves it up to me. He just says, oh, make a make an imaginary world that I, he knows his limitations. I know my strengths. I know my limitations as well. So we, we pair very well, you know. Yeah. And, and so in terms of in terms of a writing partner. Yeah, he's he's I, I've never he's been fantastic. Yeah, he's probably one of the best collaborators I've ever worked with. Yeah. And well, and Lyft is uh, just a beautiful mixture of uh, what both of you bring and it's it's one of those books that i used in online instruction over the pandemic with third graders and mm -hmm. a student that invited me to present to her class and uh, just just a wonderful book and uh, yeah. wonderful work yeah. just came out of that yeah i never i never realized because i thought when i first did the book I, I felt like it was obviously going to be you know an asian centric book you know but i didn't i it didn't it didn't really connect with me until um until other people wrote to me about about how, you know, a book like Drawn Together uh, could could connect with grandparents of all different cultures, and then you know you carry that into a title like Lift, um, which oh gosh, I really love that title, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, that book came out a month into the pandemic, like right after the entire world shut down, so. Mm -hmm. So it was absolutely frustrating because I thought 
I thought as a sophomore book, I thought Lyft was just absolutely fantastic. And no one cared because the world was on fire. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, whatever. I It is what it is, but I'm still proud of, I'm still proud of the work that we've done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll say to listeners out there, if you want some really quality storytelling and picture book form and if drawn together, grab you absolutely lift is a, a wonderful story yeah yeah oh. <laughs> um so so you were talking about sort of the muses for some of the work that you've done yeah curious about what you hope on on the other side of that that readers take away and i'd mentioned first time for everything and aquanaut in the context of that question but you could you know mention any title um or any range across your work um, I, I do like, I do like, you know, I think, I think what makes a good writer, a very good writer is the ability to, I think we're in the business of, of, I don't want to say manipulating, but we can, we can navigate someone's emotions. We can make right. someone feel a certain way. I think that's what really makes a good title, a great title. You know, you want the, you want the author to feel, you want the reader to feel. And so, <laughs> you know, when I'm working on a book like Aquanaut, there are certain scenes where I'm saying, well, I really hope. I really hope you well up, you know, in this moment. I really hope you have a connection to the character that you can relate to. Like, you know, first time for everything. You know, when I, by the end of the memoir, when I'm parting ways with, uh, you know, the girl, Amy, in the book, sure. you know, I hope you feel those feelings. I hope you feel sad. I hope, you know, I hope you have this feeling of like, oh my gosh, will they ever see each other ever again? You know, yeah. um, and those are, those are the points that you really want to nail. Uh, and you and and using your arsenal of the ability to pace and create panels and you know like dictate you know the the facial emotions doing a close up you know really pulling those readers in you know those are tools that lend to it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I think I have one more official question okay. on my list, and then we can we can talk about anything that we might have missed that you want to make sure to share, and that is of course next creative steps. Um, where the next muses are that you, you feel comfortable talking about as well as where readers can go to learn more as you're working. Um, right now, man, my, my, my plate is pretty full. I've, I've been offered a lot of really great picture book manuscripts. Folks like, um, you know, uh, Ali, Ali Condi, uh, mm-hmm. Midlay, uh, Marvel. I'm doing a Marvel picture book with, you know, about the Hulk. Um, Gosh, and then I'm, and then I had a graphic novel back in 2010 called Sidekicks, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'm going back into there. I'm doing three more. I'm working on the second one right now. Awesome. Um, and then I sold, I sold a graphic novel series to um, Macmillan. Uh, right now, the working title is a fish named a, a fish boy named Sashimi, and so it's about this kind of like a creature from the Black Lagoon kind of creature, but he's like a really goofy. You know, goofy. Uh, you know, if, if you're if you're a characterize it in a Freudian way, he's like you know the id, where he comes to this he comes to this little sleepy fishing town, and um, he's in search of this of this legend, the the beast of Barnacle Bay, which kind of carries his description, and so he goes he goes to this town in hopes of finding this beast, thinking it might possibly be his father um and then you know in his adventures he he enrolls in school he accidentally enrolls in school and makes friends and decides to stay in town um so my my you know my next 10 year plan i guess is um to really uh, gosh i don't want to say i'm i'm i don't want to say i'm i'm pulling away from like the heartfelt stories but um i'm i'm allowing myself some time to breathe and and then work mm-hmm. on certain i'm already i'm working on my next memoir uh and and trying my hand also at uh another one as a middle grade novel and uh while i'm while i'm sorting those out i'm just going back into series you know i'm just trying to trying to make books that i think kids will enjoy and love um and uh you know hopefully hopefully you know it's my first foray into a series of my own and hopefully it'll be you know, something that kids like, um, you know, if you're, if you're interested, all, all my social media handles are 
at D Santa on Twitter and Instagram. And then uh, I'm on Facebook and I have a website, uh, dancesantatbooks.com. And um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you just Google my name, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll hand it all to you and then you can find totally. it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate in the midst of, I think you named something like seven to 10 books there. Um, I appreciate in, in the midst of all of that, you taking the time to talk with me. For sure, sure, of course. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great great to meet you and glad to talk with you anytime. Did we miss anything that you want to make sure to mention? Um, no, I think I think I'm I think I'm pretty much covered. Yeah. 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 I'll, cool, see, you, cool. I'll see you all around in the social medias. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Will you be at um, NCTE? I will be at NCTE. I will be at the Miami Book Festival. Uh, I will be in New York for the National Book Award uh, next next Wednesday, um, and then yeah, and then I get I get Thanksgiving and the hall and, and December off, and then I'm back on the road uh, in January. Um, I'm hitting the road with Lisa Yee for our series called The Misfits. Uh -huh. um, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, on the road travel. <laughs> Well, safe travels and thanks for the work you're doing and sharing stories. And thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for all, the, all you do. And thank you for putting up the parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we do. It's what we do. Right, right. Yeah. Thanks again. And, and again, glad to talk anytime. Absolute pleasure. <laughs>